Hey everybody, General Scar here, and today we're going to be talking about actions and unity actions. So what are actions? Um, they're basically a way to tell scripts to do things without having direct references to them. So you can have one script call out, like send out a signal to any sort of other thing listening to it, and whatever's listening to it will do something with that signal, depending on if it'll just do something, or if you send information like with that signal, it'll do something with the information. So I think a good analogy of this would be a sort of like a radio. So you'd have like one radio station that is tuned to a certain frequency, and then you have a bunch of listeners, which are other people tuned in to that frequency as well, that can hear what the radio station is doing. And then people can call into the radio station and like say something, and then the people listening will do something when they hear something. So somebody calls in and just like yells out, 47! And then everybody listening is like, okay, when I hear something, I need to do things. Like, so one person's like, oh, I need to turn this knob 47 times. And another person goes to like a chart and looks up, uh, number 47, say hello. And then another person, like they don't use the 47, but whenever they hear something, they just do a little jig in place or something like that. So we can apply this to our games in a more, you know, not so silly sense, <laughs> I guess. Um, so a good example for something like this would be a health UI system. So whenever the health gets updated, it sends out a signal just to whoever is listening and it, it, whoever is listening does something. So the health gets updated and then the health UI is listening to that signal. So they get that signal, they'll get like the new current health and then it'll update all their UI. So like the text uh, for how much health you have left gets updated, your health bar, the fill amount gets updated, and then maybe you have some particles that like play if the player gets healed or if the player gets hurt. You know, stuff like that. So we can do things with that. So Let's uh, just get started. We'll make a very simple uh, script. I'll show off the idea of actions and sort of how you can connect them. And then I'll talk about static actions. And then we'll work on a bit of a health UI system just to sort of show off how it all works. So, so I'm going to create a new C Sharp script and I'm just going to call it action tut for tutorial stuff. And we'll open that up. Okay, so we have our new script open, and to use actions, we need to be using system, and this will give us this will give us access to actions. So we can just write out like a public action test action, something like that. So now we have an action, and we can call this and stuff. But first, I want to talk about what's the difference between an action and a unity action. They're basically the same thing. But to use actions, you have to load in the system library up here, which is, I believe, is pretty big and can sort of slow stuff down. It shouldn't really matter in the context of like a smaller kind of game, but it can, you know, if you have too much of it over time or something. But Unity actions are basically the same thing. They've just taken all the action stuff out of the system library and put it into their own library. So instead of using system, you would be using, um, Unity engine dot events, and this is where they put their Unity actions, and it's the same thing as an action, and you just literally put Unity, if I can spell, in front of action, and now it works. So they'll work all the same. I'm going to be using Unity actions just because that's what I usually work in. I'm going to be referring to them as actions, though, just going ahead. So we have created our first action. Um, let's get rid of these. Okay, so now we have an action. And what actions do is they sort of tie into different methods. So when, um, or I guess some people call them functions, but these things like update and start and whatever you write. Whenever the uh, action gets called by something, then any of the methods that are listening to it also get called. So we can create new methods to tie into our actions to do stuff. So there's a bit of formatting that you can follow to sort of help clear up what's being assigned to what. Um, basically, we'll just make a private void and we're going to call it test action handler. So if you add handler to the end of the action name, it sort of gives you an idea that this is getting called whenever this action is also getting called. So you can sort of, you know, keep that in your head. So uh, we're just going to call a debug.log and we're going to say clicked and to call this what we're going to do is first we need to assign this so we'll do this in awake so private void 
awake. And we'll say test action equals test action handler and then a close oh, with a semicolon. So you don't need the parentheses when you're assigning these things. And I assigned it equal to. Now you can also do plus equals and you can let you assign multiple. But if you only want one assigned at a time, you can actually just sort of set equal and then it'll assign It'll, it'll only it'll like override whatever was assigned before. There's also if you can you can set it to null and that'll just clear out anything that it's assigned to and it won't have any more listeners. So for now we're just going to do uh, test action handler with no parentheses. We just need the name. So now we're going to call our action in update uh, if we just hit input dot get mouse button down zero for our left click. We're just going to say test action parentheses and then semicolon and that will call our test action. So let's test this out right now. There's something a little bit wrong with this, but we'll go over it in a second. Um, let's create an empty game object here and we'll just sign this. And if we run the scene and I left click and you'll see that it's saying clicked. Now this is a bit of a weird example um, because we could just assign test action handler to be running an update instead of calling the action itself but uh, we'll go a little bit more into this in one second first I want to address what's wrong with this um, if this action test action or any action you make is null if it doesn't have anything any listeners assigned to it and you try and call it you're gonna get a null reference exception so let's just let me show you that really quick. See, so there's nothing assigned. I, I commented out the part that assigned it in the code here. So this is no longer getting assigned to it. And it's giving me a null reference exception. Um, so we want it first, we want to check if it's null before we call it. And we want to do this anytime we have an action just in case there is, you know, it's null and you don't want to get the null reference exception because that can break like the rest of your script. So we'll just do if uh, test action not equal to null. And we can just do that. Now uh, JetBrains is telling me here to use null propagation, which is something that's really cool and easier because writing out this if statement every time is kind of a pain. You don't want to do that. So instead, we can use what's called null propagation. And I talked about this in, I think, my Unity events video. So it's basically the same thing. So we're going to do test action, and we're going to do question mark dot invoke. And so what the question mark does, so dot invoke is a method of test action. And basically, that gets called when you do test action that. That's the same as doing invoke. It's basically the same. But when we do a question mark in front of it, that does that does a null check for us. So it'll only run this method if this test action is not null. So this is just a super quick and easy way to write null checks for this sort of thing. And it's very helpful. And it's definitely something that you should learn to do because it will save you a lot of time of writing out if statements, which are a pain. Now. Let's make another script. So we're going to change this because this doesn't really make sense. Why would we be why would we be calling this this way? We're going to make another script that's going to tie into this action here to call it whenever we get our mouse down. But we're going to leave all this stuff the same. We're just going to uh, we're going to remove this and in our awake, we're also going to get rid of this. And I'll explain in a minute. First, we're going to make another script a C sharp script and we're going to call this we're going to call this action child and our action tut is going to be our parent so what we're going to do with this is we're going to have a method um, we're going to call it public void test action handler and in here we're just going to debug dot log clicked so this is the same thing as is the same method that was in our action tut here, but we've just moved it into this script. Uh, so now on start, so we're going to instantiate an object. Uh, in start, we're going to 
add this action child component to it, and then we're going to assign our action to this method. So that way we, you know, to show that we can have this action calling multiple things that are sort of connected to it, but without having to have direct references to these things, which is very helpful. I think I've used this in sort of uh, inventory systems for whenever an inventory gets updated, all the different slots in the inventory are just listening for an inventory update action, so that whenever that's get called, that's when they all update, so they don't have to be constantly listening, and I don't need to have references, direct references to all the different inventory slots. So let's uh, start. So we'll have a game object, child equals new game object child and then child we can do add component and let's we'll add a component called action child and then we also want to set this equal to a thing so we'll have it be uh, action child we'll call this kid equals this add component. So then we're adding the component to the child game object, but then we're also assigning this kid variable equal to the thing that we assign. So we don't have to do like another get component. We can set it equal when we're adding it and it will set it equal anyway. So now uh, test action equals kid dot uh, test action handler. And now whenever we call this method here, it will call in the the kid. So let's just run this really quick. We see that the child gets created, action child script gets added, and we left click and we see that it's being clicked. And it's being clicked from our action child. That's cool. So let's do something else. Let's add a plus equals instead of an equals and let's put this in a for loop. And let's just do some string I think called formatting. So if you put a, a dollar sign in front of a string, we can use curly braces uh, to put in variables, to concatenate them instead of having to do the plus variable name plus and then quotes and all that stuff. So we can just like directly in line put our variables in the strings, which is very helpful. So what this is doing is we're going to create, I believe, three children and every child will get its number added to the end of its name. Um, and then we're going to assign this action to their method. And we're doing plus equals here so that all three can be assigned at the same time instead of just one at a time as if we were doing the equals. Because again, equals can only have one at a time and it overrides whatever, whatever is already there. But if we plus equals it, it'll just add it to a list basically. So now we have three, each one being called from each of the three children. Cool. So you can you know assign stuff to scripts that you have references to and things like that. So like if you're creating one or enabling a list or something like that, as you do it, you can assign these references instead of having to do them by hand in the inspector, this can be sort of a lot faster and like for more modular things. So like if you want to have like, I want five inventory slots or I want to maybe have 10 inventory slots, depending on the inventory, you don't have to have like different prefabs or anything for all the different inventories. You can just have one base inventory that changes depending on how many you want. And like, because we're doing plus equal stuff and we're adding only the ones that need to get called, you know, it, it, it works better.